There will always be people, many of goodwill, who do not share my view on the issue of choice. On this fundamental issue, I will not yield, and Planned Parenthood will not yield. Thank you, Planned Parenthood. God bless you. Holy moly! You can't handle the truth! You can go to hell, hell, hell. <laughs> Catholics out there in internet land. My name is Ephraim Cortez, and once again, you're tuned in to Cafeteria Catholics, where Catholicism and politics collide. And we are coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, via Spreaker Web Radio, the state of the art in internet communications. And welcome, one and all, to our little Catholic Edge of the Internet Universe Cafeteria Catholics, where we say what most Catholics are thinking. And DailyCatholicHeadliners.com. Fellow Catholics, do not allow yourselves to be mal-informed. Be well-informed in this day and age of deception and half-truths by the mainstream media and even some so-called Catholic media sources. Okay, do not allow yourselves to be malinformed. You owe it to yourselves to be well informed. The best way to do that, dailycatholicheadliners.com. Also, the poetic verses available in your Kindle stores at this moment. The poetic verses, a short book of Catholic poetry written personally by me. And my homies out there in the South Bronx, you know, I grew up in the South Bronx with you guys, and I dabbled a little bit in rap and rhyme, right? And if you're wondering where that led, the ability to rap and rhyme, where it led, didn't lead to hip-hop, it led to the poetic verses. And so with my homies out there, if you've got a Kindle, download the poetic verses. See what I'm up to, okay? The Poetic Verses. And it's actually ranking in the Kindle store, which means that it's selling. People are actually buying the Poetic Verses. So go out there, download it, check it out. Also, <laughs> I'll be done in a minute. Also, uh, my first apologetic presentation in the Kindle store, okay, uh, on the Sacrament of Confession. Catholic Bible thumps. Confess your sins to one another. Okay? And it's probably the best thing that I've ever written. Right? And I say that about everything I write. <laughs> but it's probably the best thing that I've written. I've written a lot of stuff having to do with the Catholic Church, defending the teaching of the Catholic Church through many websites, you know, different websites that I've had uh, through the years, defending the teaching of the Catholic Church. But this is probably the best thing that I've ever written on confession. And I do a lot of reading, as you know. I'm, I'm out there researching all the time, right? And I read a lot of stuff on the Internet, some good, some bad, right? But I've read a lot of good stuff on the Sacrament of, conf uh, of Confession, and, you know, uh, this is probably one of the best things that I've seen out there when it comes to defending, apologetically defending, the sacrament of confession. So check it out. Check it out. It's available in your Kindle store. 
Catholic Bible thumps. Confess your sins to one another. Okay, dissecting the freedom of choice, fellow Catholics. As you know, marriage has been turned upside down by language, essentially, right? Marriage, the institution of marriage is not about a man and a woman coming together in holy matrimony, right? And God stepping into that relationship, uh, uh, allotting it graces, right? And stepping in when it comes to the creation of new life, right? Has nothing to do with that anymore, right? Uh, the war of words on the other side, by the other side, has turned marriage upside down. It's, it's no longer about what marriage is about, right? It is now about equality. It is about benefits, right? It is about being non-discriminatory. But it's not about, <laughs> but it's not about a man and a woman coming together, right? As God ordained it to be, it has been turned upside down by language, right? And in the same way, the freedom of will. The freedom of will, this gift given to the human race by God, the freedom of will, has been turned upside down by language once again. It is no longer the freedom of will, hasn't been for a long time, right? It is the freedom of choice. Will has been turned into choice. You see how they replace words here and there, how they manipulate the language, fellow Catholics. And the freedom of choice, it is a term that has, has been adopted by the abortion industry, right? Because abortion is big business in this country. This is what abortion is about. It is big business. And so the abortion industry has made abortion widely accepted by the culture, by Americans, right has made it widely accepted through the playing of language will has been changed into choice and it is not the freedom of will any longer it hasn't been for a long time it is about the freedom of choice sounds good right and perhaps it's because it strikes a chord inwardly with us, right? Because we can relate it inwardly to, to, to freedom of will. We can relate the freedom of, freedom of choice to the freedom of will. And so, the other side, liberals, right? Politicians, they are great. Obama's very good at playing with the language, right? And so, through the playing of the language, Marriage has been turned upside down. The freedom of will has been turned upside down. And we heard the president there at the beginning talking about choice, right? The freedom of choice. And let's go ahead and play that. We've got a couple of other clips uh, with Barack Obama speaking about choice. But let's go ahead and play that first one once again. There will always be people, many of goodwill, who do not share my view on the issue of choice. On this fundamental issue, I will not yield and Planned Parenthood will not yield. And so he's standing before Planned Parenthood. This is uh, prior to him becoming president. Actually, he was campaigning for the presidency at the time. And he makes this speech before Planned Parenthood. And he speaks about choice. And of course, choice to Barack Hussein Obama means abortion choice to liberals to planned parenthood means abortion this is the only choice that we are given as americans right some choices are have been taken away through obamacare as a matter of fact the freedom of will has been taken away to a certain extent it is a stepping stone in the abolishing of the freedom of will in this country. The individual mandate that is attached to Obamacare is an attack on the freedom of will. 
okay? We no longer have the right to choose in this country, in spite of the fact that, you know, freedom of choice is thrown out there and we are given the illusion that this president, that Planned Parenthood, that Democrats, that liberals honor the freedom of choice, that they honor the freedom of will, all the while they are busying themselves with the taking away of the freedom of will through the individual mandate, right? People in this country, Americans, are being forced to partake in something that they may not want to be a part of. Right? Through the individual mandate. And so, the freedom of will has been attacked. All the while, they go around spouting the term freedom of choice. As if they are heroes, defenders of the freedom of will. Right? This is the implication. This is the implication that they love, that they are defenders of the freedom of will. And nothing could be further from the truth, especially when it comes to this administration, the Pope Bum administration. They are enemies of the freedom of will. The only choice we have, as far as this administration is concerned, the only choice we have the right to is the right to kill babies in the womb. The choice to kill babies in the womb. That's the only choice we have as Americans, or that they would like for us to have as Americans. We don't have the choice to bear arms, or we do for, for the moment. But if they could do away with that, they would do away with it tomorrow, right this minute. Because they are enemies of choice in all actuality. They are enemies of the freedom of will. But nevertheless, freedom of will has been turned upside down by language. The freedom of choice has replaced the freedom of will. And you know, there are those who believe that there is no such thing as the freedom of will. And perhaps this is what, what, what fuels those who, who stand behind the freedom of choice, right? Their non-belief in the freedom of will fuels this mantra, their advocacy for the freedom of choice. It is a veil. It is a distraction. It is a lie. The freedom of choice is a lie. We, the only choice we have is the choice to kill babies in the womb. And in all actuality, it's, 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 it's a false choice. Right? Because it does not add to our power to choose. It adds to the government's power to eliminate, to control. And so freedom of choice is something that actually benefits government. That benefits liberal government. It is not something that benefits society. It is not something that benefits women. It is not something that benefits the human race. Because choice as they see it is all about abortion. It's not about the right to bear arms, right? Pretty soon it's not going to be about the, the right to school your own children, right? If you want to homeschool your children, pretty soon you may not have that choice. There are some states that are moving in that direction, right? And so choices, one step at a time, being taken away. All the while, they present themselves as heroes of choice. And not even that choice which they stand behind so firmly, abortion. Not even that choice is a choice that empowers the people. It does not empower the people, it empowers government. It empowers the abortion industry. And so choice is a lie. 
It is a non-truth. And this is why it is embraced by those who, uh, who, who, who do not believe in the freedom of will. If they did believe in the freedom of will, they would allow it to flourish. Instead, they are attempting to snuff it out through Obamacare, the individual mandate. They are enemies of the freedom of will. You know, and then you have those, I mean, you have atheists and so forth who do not believe that there is such a thing as the freedom of will because they believe that we are basically, you know, robots. <laughs> we Christians, we are basically robots that just do God's will, right? We are robots. There is no such thing as the freedom of will. There's no such thing, as far as they, they are concerned, as choice. Because as far as they are concerned... Choices are, or choice is created by God because they try to argue that, you know, uh, we believe that God created all things. And so, therefore, if he, if he created all things, then he must have created choices, right? Which makes no sense, right? Makes no sense because God is the, the creator of all. But he is the creator of all material things, Right? You know, choice begins in the heart. Choice begins in the mind. It is not material, right? It is not a material thing. You know, it's not a rock. It's not a table. It's not ocean. It's not the water, right? It's not, it, it isn't material, right? All material things were made by God. An idea, a choice... These begin in the heart of men, right? And this is why we have free will. Uh, would, it would not make sense to have Ten Commandments if we did not have freedom of will. God would not have to step in and say, uh, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, right? If we did not have freedom of will, because we would basically be... Uh, perpetually doing the will of God, right? But obviously we can deviate from the will of God and so therefore we have to have ten commandments to instruct us, to guide us on how to live a, 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 a faithful life, right? You know, it's kind of like our kids. We raise our kids. We try to raise them right, right? And we tell them, you know, uh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, because we know that they have the ability to choose wrongly, right? And so the fact that we have Ten Commandments, the implication is plainly there that we have the freedom of will, the freedom to choose, right? If we did not, then there wouldn't be a need for Ten Commandments, instructions, a guide on how to live our lives, right? But the fact that we do have Ten Commandments points to the, to the fact, to the reality that we have freedom of will and that we can stray away from the will of God. There wouldn't be a need for Ten Commandments if we did not have the freedom of will, not to mention we see it in Scripture. We see it in Scripture. Right? Uh, John chapter 6, perfect example. Jesus speaks about the Eucharist. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And at this point, you know, this teaching is hard, they say. Right? His disciples, they say, this teaching is hard. Who can accept it? Right? And so they walk away, and the only ones that are left are the twelve apostles. And he turns to them, and he says, Do you also want to leave? Which implicates freedom of choice, right? The freedom of will. The twelve apostles, they had the freedom to choose, they had the freedom of will. 
And Jesus Christ himself, God himself, Jesus Christ honored it. Right? He asked, do you also want to leave? He allowed them to freely make a choice. Right? He allowed them to exercise their freedom of will. I mean, it could have been all over for Jesus' ministry at that point, right? And yet, even at that moment, he honored their freedom of will. He said, do you also want to leave? And so something that is honored, put upon a pedestal by God himself, is dishonored by government, by this administration. The so-called heroes of choice, of the freedom of choice. Free will has been turned upside down by freedom of choice. It has been turned upside down by the playing of the language. Just as marriage has been turned upside down, the institution of marriage has been turned upside down essentially by language. Equality, discrimination, Benefits. The freedom of will turned upside down by the freedom of choice. They are experts. Experts when it comes to uh, manipulating the language. They are experts at it. Right? Claim to honor what they... in reality dishonor claim to believe in what they actually do not believe in if they believed in the freedom of will they would not be busy trying to strip it away from us and then you have the HHS mandate which is basically you know a graduation it is the next level into the violation of the freedom of will. If they can violate our freedom of will, then why not violate our freedom of conscience? Our freedom of religion. Right? Our freedom of conscience. You know, thought. Thought. Being uh, attacked by this administration. The ability to think okay the ability to think being attacked by the Pope bomb administration by the left by the unwitting in the culture okay it's just going along for the ride right sounds good let's do it right sounds good let's do it right freedom of choice sounds good let's do it Equality for homosexuals sounds good. Let's do it, right? Being non-discriminatory sounds good. Let's do it, right? Words. Words can draw people. And they know this, right? And through words, they are managing to transform this country. And this is the goal of Obama, from the beginning, in front of this audience, this Planned Parenthood audience, okay, in this very speech, right, uh, Obama speaks of transforming the country. As a matter of fact, here it is. Let's see if I've got the right clip, fellow Catholics. I believe this is it. Uh, that's the first one that I did. There it is. And I'm absolutely convinced we're not just going to win an election, but more importantly, we're going to transform this nation. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. He's going to transform this nation. And is he doing that? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Homosexual marriage is part of that transformation. What, this, what it means to be American is being transformed by this president through Obamacare. Religious freedom. 
our first right enumerated in the Constitution, being transformed, or at least he is attempting to transform it, through Obamacare. Freedom itself, the freedom of will, being transformed by this president. Actually, uh, the freedom of will, uh, it's, it's been in the process of being transformed for decades now, of course, through the freedom of choice, you know. And it's mainly been the abortion industry that has led the charge as far as the turning upside down of the freedom of will. All right. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a break, fellow Catholics, and we will see you on the other side. Please do not touch that mouse. Have you ever had someone show you incredible, overwhelming kindness? You know, the kind of generosity that makes you feel kind of small and unworthy? Well, when it comes to our relationship with the Eucharist, we should probably feel the same way. Now, we know that the Eucharist is truly the body and blood of Jesus Christ. But how often do we stop to think about the price that was paid for us to be graced with such a gift? In order for Jesus to leave us his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, he first had to offer himself completely. Through his agonizing passion and death, the lamb was slain so the bread of life could be ours. Is our response one of fervent gratitude, or have we become apathetic and complacent? Jesus longs to nourish us with himself in the Eucharist. Do we long to receive this gift? going on, fellow Catholics? We are back, Cafeteria Catholics, dissecting the freedom of choice, fellow Catholics. The freedom of choice, a lie, a lie put out there by the abortion industry mainly. And, uh, you know, I'm tired talking about the abortion industry. Uh, I'm tired. There, let's turn that off. I'm tired of hearing... You know, I was on the internet the other day and Planned Parenthood talking about wanting to reduce the number of abortions and how many people actually buy into that, right? They actually believe that Planned Parenthood is interested in reducing the number of abortions. And by the way, dailycatholicheadliners.com, the place to go for information, the poetic verses downloaded in your Kindle store. Catholic Bible Thumps, also you can download at your uh, uh, Kindle store. Catholic Bible Thumps, confess your sins to one another. But anyway, the abortion industry, right? It's, it, it is a business. It is a business, right? And here we have Planned Parenthood. They are the leader of the pack when it comes to the abortion industry, right? They made billions last year on abortion. Right? This is their bread and butter. The killing of babies in the womb is how uh, Planned Parenthood makes its money. Right? The killing of babies to Planned Parenthood is what cheeseburgers are to McDonald's. Right? This is how McDonald's makes its money. Selling cheeseburgers, right? Planned Parenthood, in turn, they make their money killing babies. It's that simple. They are selling a service. Or, you know, they, they claim that it is a service, the killing of babies, but this is how they perceive it. They are a business, right? And here we have a president who claims to be anti-business, anti-corporation. He's for the little guy, and yet he will not let the little guy out of the womb 
right? And the corporation, the leader of the pack, when it comes to uh, keeping those babies from entering into the world, he's all for, right? Claims to be for the little guy, doesn't allow the little guy out of the womb, and the industry that is making sure that, that children do not make it out of the womb, these are the institutions that are honored by Barack Hussein Obama. And yet at the same time claims to be for the little guy. And people believe it. Right? But how many people out there believe that Planned Parenthood is actually interested in reducing the number of abortions? Right? And I think part of it is because they fail to see abortion for what it is. It is a business. It is big business in this country. Worldwide, it is big business. And, of course, the leader of the pack in that business is Planned Parenthood, right? Just as uh, McDonald's is perhaps the leader of the pack when it comes to selling cheeseburgers, right? Now, do you think, would you believe, would you believe that uh, McDonald's, uh, you know, if they came out and said that they were going to la launch a campaign uh, in order that they might reduce the number of cheeseburgers that they sell? doesn't make sense does it it would hinder their business which is the sale of cheeseburgers right quarter pounders big macs double cheeseburgers i personally like the the double cheeseburgers you know they're a dollar on the dollar menu i could get a couple of those and but anyway but this is their business and so if mcdonald's came out today and said we want to reduce the number of cheeseburgers we sell would you believe that it would hinder their business enormously, right, to do that, right? And in the same way, uh, uh, Planned Parenthood, they have no interest whatsoever in reducing the number of abortions. This is how they make their money, right? And people fail to see that abortion is a business. It is big business. It is diabolical business, right? But it is a business, Right? Just as slavery was big business. Right? And if you owned slaves, right? Now this is one of the reasons why, why, why there, was, th there was a war over slavery. Because those who became rich, literally off the backs of black people, they didn't want to give it up. Right? They did not want to give it up. This is how they made their money. Slavery was, uh, uh, was an industry. It was an, an industry, just as a abortion is an industry today. And so Planned Parenthood doesn't want to give it up. The Democrat Party, they don't want to give it up. Because they are in the pocket of Planned Parenthood. More abortions means more money for Planned Parenthood and more money for the Democrat Party in the form of campaign contributions, right? And so they don't want to give it up. It is big business, right? And so why would we believe that Planned Parenthood has an interest in reducing the number of abortions? And one of the ways in which they do this Planned Parenthood, is that they, 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 they argue that contraceptives, which they are totally for, right? They are totally for contraception, right? They say that contraception will reduce the number of abortions. And yet, the Gut Matcher Institute, uh, which is actually the, the research arm of Planned Parenthood, the Gut Matcher Institute has found that I believe it's 52%, more than 50% of the abortions that take place in this country take place because the contraceptive failed, right? This is the research arm of Planned Parenthood, the Gut Matcher Institute. In other words, Planned Parenthood is fully aware 
that more than 50% of the abortions that take place in this country take place because, because of the contraceptive failed. They know this. It's their own research arm, so they know this. So why do you think they want you on contraception? Why do you think that the Democrats, that the Pope Obama administration, want as many women as possible on contraception? Because they know that it will increase, not decrease, the number of abortions in this country. And in turn, that means more money for Planned Parenthood. And in turn, it means more money for the Democrats. They do not care about women. Contraception is not about compassion for women. It's not about women's rights. It is about money. Follow the money. That's what it's about. More abortions mean more money. And if you believe, if you believe that McDonald's wants to sell uh, fewer numbers of cheeseburgers, then I guess that you will believe that Planned Parenthood wants to reduce the number of abortions. Why would a business do that to itself? Abortion is big business in this country. Just as selling cheeseburgers is big business in this country. And it might be a crude analog uh, analogy, but Planned Parenthood is a crude, diabolical, wicked organization. You know, the slave owners of the past, they made their money on the backs of slavery, on the backs of black men and women. Planned Parenthood, abortionists, they make their money on the dead bodies of babies. Which is more diabolical? All right, if you believe that slavery was diabolical, then so is abortion. So is abortion. And these Democrats, uh, <laughs> these Democrats, they are against, they are against banning abortions after five months. We know, we know that a child in the womb suffers pain at that stage of the pregnancy. And yet, these uh, these horrible excuses for human beings, the Democrats, they are all for it. And yet this is the party of the little guy that claims to be the party of the little guy. And they will not let the little guy out of the womb. Right? And they are essentially running their campaigns on the blood of unborn babies. These despicable men and women in the Democrat Party. This despicable man that we have in the White House, Barack Hussein Obama. Perhaps the most staunch supporter of Planned Parenthood and abortion that we've ever had in the political realm in this country. Barack Hussein Obama who has argued that a child who survives a botched abortion does not deserve, should not have, health care. Mr. Healthcare himself, right? The man who is achieving the destruction of the country through health care will not allow a child who survives a botched abortion to have health care voted three times against legislation the born alive infant protection act voted against legislation that would allow just that that a child who survive a miracle child who survives a botched abortion should not have health care should die in a dirty linen closet right this is the defender of choice, right? 
the defender, essentially, of the freedom of will. The freedom of will, right? That freedom of choice is just a lie. Freedom of choice applies only to abortion. Only to abortion. If you want to kill a child in the womb, then you have the right to exercise your freedom of will. But if you do not want to buy health care, that right is stripped away from you. If you want to go out and buy a gun, that right they are fighting tooth and nail to take away from you. So there is no such thing as the freedom of choice. Freedom of choice only applies to abortion. And again, abortion does not empower the people. It eliminates the people, right? It empowers government. It gives government control over the human race. And so that, that way, uh, a certain class of people can never rise up against the elites. Why do you think that, uh, yeah, well, uh, the United States government, under many administrations, has been for contraception in third world countries. Because they want to keep them third world countries through... Uh, contraception. This way those countries never rise up against the power of the United States. The power that is the United States. And I love this country, but the truth is the truth. Right? It is a strategic uh, warfare in a certain sense. Right? If you do not want certain countries rising up against you, a certain opponent rising up against you. Best way to do that is to keep them from procreating. Keeping their populations from growing, controlling their populations. This is what abortion is about. This is what contraception is about. Right? Aside from the fact that it's big business. Right? Margaret Sanger. This is what she was all about. Controlling certain sections of the population. Right? Not allowing them to procreate. Right? And it keeps that certain class of people from rising up against the elites, right, so-called, right, the superior order, right, the inferior order can never rise up against the superior order when you control their birth rates, when you control them, when you control their procreation, right? But anyway, let's go ahead and leave it there, fellow Catholics, and we will see you next time. Please... Let's pick a good song. Please pray for our bishops. Please pray for this great country. This country is in dire need of prayer. Please pray for the Catholic Church, fellow Catholics. And we will see you next time on Cafeteria Catholic. Don't forget, dailycatholichatliners.com, the poetic verses. Lord, I'd like to be in an orphan. And of course... Catholic Bible Thought Church. that I might make it on my own. See you next time, brother. God bless. Until I find myself a morning, penniless with no place to call home. Till a train pulled in the station, conductor cried out to the crowd, "Sha la la la, the love of God's our destination." Tickets have been paid for But everyone's allowed So why don't you Pack your bags and get on board We are headed for the Lord To our Father's house Food to me and brand new clothes to wear Grass are green, the sky's so blue There's room enough for me and you We're at my Father's house Let's be going home Now let you think of me mistaken 
your front and back. Sometimes I wonder what the missing grace never loved me less. He's always called out to.